So let's start lecture 23. And in this lecture, we are going to discuss two quasi-Newton methods, the BFGS method and the DFP method. And I am Dr. Ranjan Ganguly. Now, the full form of the BFGS method is the Bryden, Fletcher, Goldfarb, Shano method. And these are the four researchers who came up with this method. And this algorithm was proposed in 1970. And essentially, it gives us an update formula for the Hessian matrix, which is robust to the fact that line searches may not be very precise in most cases. And in this particular method, you can use a somewhat imprecise line search. So that is one of the strengths of this method. Now, the BFGS method is computationally very efficient because function calls can be reduced if you are using a line search which is not very precise. And this will save you enormous amount of computer time because a large amount of computer time is spent in these function calls. And here, essentially, you may be calling a function which is a numerical simulation, which is quite expensive to compute. So let us start with the method here, which can help you to write a program. So essentially, you start with estimating a starting design. So all gradient methods essentially require this kind of starting design. Then you choose a positive definite matrix B0, which is the, met the matrix which starts off this method. And if you have no matrix there with you, you can select B0 is I. You choose a small number epsilon, set k equal to 0, and you compute the gradient vector at this point x0, which we will call c0. Now you check whether this current point is an optimal point. You calculate the norm of the gradient. If this norm is less than your chosen small number stop, else continue. Now you find the search direction by solving the linear system bk dk is minus ck remembering that bk is essentially hk in the newton method but here it is not hk it is a matrix which is pretending to be hk and it's essentially starting off as i and then building off from there now the interesting thing is if you start with b0 equals i you can see that you are essentially starting with the steepest descent direction and then you are progressing progressively building up the B matrix. So you are progressively switching from the steepest descent direction to the Newton direction, which essentially you can relate to the Marquardt method and realize why this method makes sense because far away from the optimal point, the steepest descent would be okay. And as you are getting closer to the particular minimum point, PK should tend toward HK using this particular method. Now, the next thing is to calculate the one dimensional value alpha, which minimizes the function value at the next point xk plus alpha dk. And once you have done that, you can calculate the new design vector xk plus 1 equals xk plus the step size into dk, where you have obtained dk from the linear system solution. Now, of course, here you can see that you do need to solve this linear system and that can be somewhat expensive process, especially if you have a system which has a large number of design variables. So if you have a thousand design variable system, you essentially have a thousand by thousand matrix here, a thousand by one vector and a thousand by one vector and these things can become more computationally expensive. Now the next stage is where the BFGS method comes in, which is building the Hessian matrix. And here you use two vectors. SK is basically the step size into your search direction DK. You have these both from your current step. YK is CK plus 1 minus CK. Since you have XK plus 1 with you, you can calculate CK plus 1, which is the gradient at XK plus 1. You plug both these into the BFGS formula, and essentially you will get a new matrix. Now, if you look at this carefully, the 
Denominator terms here are scalars. So essentially these are dot product terms. The numerator terms are matrices. So essentially this is a n by 1 into a 1 by n. So this will become a matrix. This will become a matrix. So essentially you add the BK matrix with this matrix here and this matrix here. Remembering that these particular vectors represent the change in the design vector and the change in the gradient vector. So essentially this method is using the past history to slowly build up the Hessian matrix. So at the end of this particular method, your BK should very closely simulate the Hessian matrix. In fact, for quadratic functions, it should become the Hessian matrix. Once you have done this, you set K is K plus one, go to bullet two in the previous slide and continue until you have converged. Now, one of the things about the BFGS update formula is that it typically keeps the H matrix or the B matrix in this case, approximately positive definite. And you can check out for proofs or hints towards the proof in my book. Now, there are certain problems which will happen when you actually use the BFGS method or you try to code the BFGS method. And these come from three sources. First of all, the line search may not be very good. You may be doing a rough line search. You may round off because of computer problems or computer mathematics. And you will also have truncation because of computer usage. So we will discuss these later, but let us say these are typical problems of numerical computation. Now, because of these things, what is shown in the theoretical proofs does not actually always take place. So you may have a peculiar situation where the Hessian matrix may become singular or indefinite. And in that case, your search algorithm would not work because you are trying to solve that linear system. Again, you can at that point repair the B matrix just like we have discussed in the Newton method by looking at the diagonal terms, factorizing it, and then making some of those diagonal terms positive if they are negative. So that will ensure that the Hessian approximation matrix remains positive definite and the search direction is a descent direction. Now we come to the next very powerful method and that's the Davidson-Fletcher-Powell method known as the DFP method. And here, instead of trying to calculate the H matrix, you try to calculate the inverse of the H matrix. So essentially this matrix. This is a very powerful method in unconstrained optimization developed by Davidson in 1959 and modified by Fletcher and Powell in 1963. Very important names in optimization. Now, one of the things you get by approximating inverse of H is that instead of solving this system, that is B D equals minus C, which is done in the BFGS method, you solve the system D is minus A C. And this system is simply obtained by matrix multiplication, whereas this system requires you to solve a linear system. So again, as the size of the design variables becomes larger or the matrices become larger, the DFP method is going to have one good point here that you do not actually need to solve this system and therefore have problems with singularity and so on of the BK matrix. Now, so in the DFP method, you essentially obtain the search direction by matrix ve vector multiplication, which can be coded in, in a very robust and efficient manner. Not that there are also systems to solve linear systems eff efficiently, but you do understand that this will involve somewhat more work than solving this multiplication problem. So let us look at the DFP method and how you can code this. So again, you start with a starting vector x0, you select a small number epsilon, you choose a symmetric positive definite matrix to start the process. And again, if you know nothing else, you start off with a0 is i. A0 is I is a very good choice. I personally like it because essentially it requires you not to calculate anything. And also it starts you off with the steepest descent search direction, which generally turns out to be quite good, at least at the first point. Now, 
set k equal to 0, compute the gradient vector, check the gradient vector norm. If the gradient vector norm is less than epsilon, you are very lucky, you are at the minimum point, else you continue. So when you continue, the first step is you create the search direction or you calculate the search direction and that's D is minus A into C. And this is a matrix multiplication. You have A0 from here, so the first path is the steepest descent. Then you calculate the alpha value to minimize the function at the next point. Then you update the design. So this is the algorithm here. Now again, the update of a matrix is this time built up using the same type of information, which is the change in the design vector, which is SK, change in the gradient, which is YK. You already have XK plus one, so you can calculate CK plus one, and then you can obtain this particular matrix formula. So here, if you look at the update formula, you will again notice that the denominator terms here are scalar and the numerator terms here are matrices. So essentially you add this matrix to this matrix to this matrix. Now this particular formula can be coded in without storage of the vectors here. So again, that is something you can learn if you know numerical programming very well. If this update has worked out properly, you go back, set k is k plus one, go to bullet three in the previous slide. Now let us make some comments on this DFP method. Now, typically you can show that the DFP method, the matrix A is positive definite for all K if the starting matrix is positive definite, which of course you can guarantee by choosing A0 is one or I. Now, when the method is applied to a positive definite quadratic function, this AK will become the inverse of the H matrix after K is N or at k is n. Now the DFP method can get stuck for non-quadratic functions due to a becoming nearly singular. And again, you can bring in some code here to avoid these kind of problems in many situations. But in general, we can say that the BFGS method, which is complementary to the DFP algorithm is more numerically robust. So it's theoretically somewhat preferred. Now, let us make some general comments on unconstrained optimization. We have covered various gradient methods in chapter three and now in chapter four, the current chapter, we have looked at the Newton type methods. Now, these methods have been extensively studied by researchers on a plethora of test functions and also for practical problems. And there is considerable knowledge of these in terms of their numerical performance. So we are now going to summarize some recommendations regarding these methods for practical use. So the conjugate gradient and DFP are very good and efficient numerical methods, which work well for most nonlinear optimization problems. Now BFGS is also an excellent method and has a strong theoretical basis. And the BFGS has the better thing going for it is that it is robust to sloppy line search. So sloppy line search is something which you can use in many situations to save computer time. These three methods, which is the conjugate gradient, the DFP and the BFGS should be chosen for general nonlinear unconstrained optimization problems. And they are very easy to code. And if you have coded them and have them ready, if you are working in a practical setting in a company or even in a university research lab, you can use these methods to solve any kind of unconstrained optimization problem. You don't necessarily need to use toolboxes and so on. Now, we started out with classical methods. So again, you can see that the steepest descent method or the Cauchy's method and the Newton's method are classical methods. And in fact, they form the basis of most of these methods because you are using the gradient vector or you are using the Hessian matrix in all these methods. And if you do not have the gradient or the H matrix, you are trying to build up these matrices using some method. Now, Newton method will give you quadratic convergence, so it can be used as a benchmark. When you develop any new method, you can check it with the Newton method and it should work better than steepest descent and maybe slightly worse than Newton. And then you can say it has some kind of super linear convergence property, which is desirable. Because Newton method is hard to use because calculating the Hessian matrix at each step is really not feasible. 
So the both the Marquardt method and the Newton method have this expensive edge calculation problem, and therefore these are mostly used to explain the theoretical basis of some of these methods. For example, you can see that the quasi-Newton methods are actually some kind of extension on the Marquardt method because essentially they also often start with the steepest descent type of method and end up with the Newton type of method, except they are not using the H matrix, they are building up the H matrix. So these three methods, which is the steepest descent, Newton and Marquardt, or we can say Cauchy, Newton and Marquardt, should not be used for practical problems and they are mostly used for facilitating the grasping of the concepts in optimization. Now, conjugate gradient methods are typically not as efficient and robust as the quasi-Newton methods. But the big advantage of conjugate gradient is that they have low storage requirements because you do not have to carry the matrix, which represents H in the quasi-Newton methods. Now, if you have problems where you have large number of design variables, conjugate gradient methods are indispensable. And the size of the H matrix or the approximations of the H matrix, whether it is B or A, becomes huge in the quasi-Newton method. So this is something to keep in mind is that if your problem size is less than N is 100, then you can think about the quasi-Newton method. If your problem size is much larger, maybe 1000, 10,000, 100,000, 1 million, then you should use the conjugate gradient method. And all these methods are relatively easy to code. I have provided you with the procedure to code these methods and you can try to code all these methods into a single program where you can call different functions to facilitate these methods. And again, these particular programs can be tied to the one-dimensional searches. So you can write code for the different one-dimensional searches such as the golden section, the quadratic function uh, search and so on. And what this will do is that if you do these things, it will become a great platform for you to learn programming. So one of the advantages of studying optimization is that it helps you study mathematics, applied mathematics, which is very important in many fields, including machine learning. And the second advantage is that these algorithms, relatively simple ones as they are, help you to write programs in Python, Julia, MATLAB, any language you pick up. and then these programs are essentially small projects which you can use to demonstrate your expertise in terms of numerical programming. So therefore, you know, instead of just writing very simplistic programs of converting Fahrenheit to centigrade and centigrade to Fahrenheit, I would suggest that you try to use some of the methods which are outlined in this particular course to showcase your skill in programming. And that will become very useful in your job search later in life. And that is also important for people who are using these particular videos to teach this course because you can use these as projects in the class and these projects will be very useful in terms of increasing the marketability of your students. So I will stop at this point on this video and we are going to spend the next few videos discussing about something which is very important but we have not addressed till now and that is the derivative calculation. A huge amount of effort is actually required in calculating the gradient vector. And how to calculate the gradient vector is very important because in most situations you are not able to differentiate the closed form solutions easily. So you need to either do finite difference or sensitivity calculations or automatic differentiation. So we are going to study these three methods in the next three lectures.